Ladies and gentlemen, fight enthusiasts, and boxing aficionados, welcome back to the ring where legends are made and stories are etched into the annals of time. Today, we embark on an expedition into the fascinating world of Ike Ibeabuchi, a name that reverberates through the boxing cosmos. This is Boxing World, your guide in this journey of triumphs, tribulations, and the indomitable spirit of an unbeaten warrior whose story transcends the boundaries of the squared circle. Born in the heart of Nigeria in 1973, Ike Ibeabuchi's journey into the pugilistic realm began at a tender age of 17. The catalyst, the electrifying clash between Tyson and Buster Douglas, that ignited a spark in Ike's heart, propelling him into the world of boxing. With a passion that burned brighter than the African sun, Ike, accompanied by his mother, made the monumental decision to traverse the Atlantic and plant his fists firmly on the soil of the United States. It was here, in the land of dreams, that Ike's boxing odyssey truly commenced. Nicknamed the President, Ike's early fights were not just mere contests, they were canvases on which he painted the portrait of raw strength and a distinctive fighting style. These initial skirmishes laid the foundation for a career that promised both glory and hardship, solidifying Ike Ibeabuchi as a name to be remembered in the boxing world. Fast forward to the transformative years of 1995-1996 and witness the emergence of Ike Ibeabuchi as a formidable force in the heavyweight scene. Standing at an imposing six feet two inches and weighing 230 pounds, Ike's physical stature alone struck fear into the hearts of his adversaries. Yet, it was his old school style that truly set him apart, a unique blend of power and tactical finesse that would become his trademark. The turning point materialized in 1995, a year that saw Ike face off against Greg Pickram. In this bout, Ike's knockout power took center stage, leaving an indelible mark on both his opponents and the audience. The ferocity with which he dispatched Pickram underscored Ike's ability to end fights decisively, setting the stage for a transformative period. But what truly defined Ike during this time was not merely his ability to land powerful blows. It was a deliberate transformation into a heavyweight force. 1996 became Ike's year of dominance, echoing the aura of the iconic Mike Tyson. Ike not only became known for his powerful punches, but also for his iconic walkouts, often draped in all black symbolizing a ferocity akin to the legendary Tyson. Fights against Ackley and Jones showcased Ike's power and precision, solidifying his status as a force to be reckoned with. The boxing world had witnessed the rise of Ike Ibeabuchi, a powerhouse whose journey promised both excitement and dominance within the demanding realm of professional heavyweight boxing. In 1997, the boxing cosmos bore witness to a clash of titans when Ike Ibeabuchi faced off against the undefeated rising star, David Tua. Tua, a powerhouse in his own right, entered the ring with an unblemished record, ready to defend his status. The battle between Ike and Tua was nothing short of intense, with both fighters displaying incredible skill and determination. The punches exchanged were thunderous, and the atmosphere was charged with anticipation. The fight unfolded over 11 grueling rounds, each moment contributing to the building suspense. In the end, the decision was controversial, but unanimous, favoring Ik Ibeabuchi. This outcome added an extra layer of drama to an already epic showdown. This clash between two formidable fighters not only showcased their prowess, but also left an indelible mark on the boxing landscape, becoming a memorable chapter in the sport's history. After the victorious clash with David Tua in 1997, Ike Ibeabuchi's life took a tumultuous turn. Experiencing excruciating headaches post-fight, 
was just the beginning, as Eek grappled with undiagnosed bipolar disorder. This unseen battle took a toll on his mental well-being, leading to a series of unsettling events. Ike, in the grip of his struggles, began demanding to be addressed as the President, showcasing signs of erratic behavior that left those around him deeply concerned. His mental health deteriorated further, manifesting in legal troubles that shook his personal and professional life. A particularly troubling incident involved the abduction of his former girlfriend's son, culminating in a four-month jail sentence. Yeah, this period marked a challenging chapter in Ike Ibeabuchi's journey, highlighting the profound impact mental health struggles can have on even the most triumphant figures in the demanding world of professional boxing. The years 1998-1999 marked Ike Ibeabuchi's attempt at a comeback, a period marred by financial hardships and impulsive actions. Returning practically bankrupt and without much forethought, Ike faced an uphill battle to reclaim his former glory. Despite these challenges, he managed to secure victories against opponents like Tim Ray and Everton Davis, showcasing the raw power that had once defined his success. However, this attempted resurgence took a tragic turn that ultimately shaped the darker narrative of Ike's career. A pivotal moment occurred when Ike, in a distressing turn of events, assaulted a woman, leading to severe legal consequences. This incident not only stained his professional reputation, but also resulted in legal troubles that cast a shadow over any hope of a sustained comeback. The comeback and downfall of Ike Ibeabuchi during this period underscored the complex and tumultuous nature of his journey within the unforgiving realms of professional boxing. In his last bout in 1999 against Chris Bird, Ike Ibeabuchi faced off against a tough adversary. Chris Bird, known for his resilience and skill, presented a formidable challenge to Ike's aspirations. The fight unfolded with intense exchanges, showcasing Ike's occasional dominance through powerful and strategic moves. Both fighters were engaged in a relentless struggle, trying to assert control over the match. Despite Ike's moments of strength, the fight took a turn, exposing the toll of his personal and mental struggles. The match served as Ike's second victory against a top-notch opponent, a testament to his boxing prowess. However, this triumph came at a steep cost, Ike's mental stability. The challenges he grappled with outside the ring became apparent, marking the conclusion of a once promising career in the heavyweight boxing scene and highlighting the fragility of success in the demanding world of professional sports. His ability to dominate in the ring showcased exceptional prowess but the struggles with mental health and legal issues overshadowed what could have been a storied career. Present-day reflections on Aiki Beabuchi encapsulate a mix of admiration for his boxing talent, empathy for his personal battles, and a recognition of the complexities that define the legacies of athletes. The lingering dream of a comeback serves as a poignant reminder of the unresolved narrative that surrounds Ike Ibeabuchi's place in the history of professional heavyweight boxing. As we conclude Ike's story, it's a tale of both triumph and turmoil. Ike, the unbeaten Nigerian warrior, showcased exceptional prowess in the ring, but faced complexities outside of it. His story isn't just about victories, it's about navigating through personal battles while being at the top of his game. If you found Ike's journey as captivating as I did, if the spirit of an unbeaten warrior struggling with the demons of his own mind resonates with you, smash that like button, ring the bell, and stay tuned for more riveting stories from the world of boxing. This is Boxing World, signing off. Until next time, fight fans.